are you learning AI? So in case if you are learning AI, what is your salary as an AI engineer? For example, you are a fresher who passed out in 2024 or who passed out in 2023 or in 2022. What is your pay scale going to be? Can you get a pay scale around 12 lakh or can you get a pay scale around 30 lakh or can you get a pay scale around 40 lakh? In case if you got hired as an AI engineer, what is your actual pay scale and what is your designation in that particular company. So let's discuss about all of them. And apart from it, for example, you are a working professional. You're having two or three years of experience. Now you want to make a transition into AI. So what going to be your designation? So now which title you want to target for? If you are targeting for that particular title, do your experience going to be considered or it going to be uh, means like uh, thrown into a dustbin. So now we will be discussing even about a difference between a transition into AI as a fresher and as an, as an experience. Now, very first one, by learning AI, you are able to target various roles. You can call yourself as an AI engineer. So what do you mean by calling yourself as an AI engineer? Now, from role to role or from job title to job title, from fresher to experienced, what exactly differs is the roles and responsibilities you are having in your resume is the crucial part. Now, what roles and responsibilities you are having in your resume going to define your designation in the company? And not only that, so designation or the particular job title depends not only about your roles and responsibilities, it depends upon the company as well. Each company going to have each names. For example, some companies nowadays, they are calling data scientist as AI engineer. So now some companies call data scientist as analyst. Some companies call data scientist as a decision scientist. So there are various names to it. Now, first one, as I said, now your designation and your salary. For example, you recently completed your AI or you completed your data science, whatever it is, by investing a very good money and you are targeting for a fresher role, zero experience, recently graduated. I'm not speaking about people who are working. So people who are recently graduated who are targeting. So I recently got one requirement where the pay scale is ranging from 3.5 lakh per annum to it is ranging up to 4.5 lakh. So there is a very less amount of margin they are picked. That's in Indian market. So 3.5 to 4.5. And they are said that it is for pure AI role, but the designation is not for AI. They call it as software engineer. They are calling it as associate software engineer. And now that is what happening. Now when you are going into a company, what they are expecting from you especially, they are expecting a very good programming skills. They are expecting a good of deep learning skills, ML skills, NLP skills, everything. And they are paying you 3.5 to uh, for somewhere around 4.5. Now, when you have an experience on the another side, maybe an internship experience, then you can target this designation. So now what are they? By learning AI, you are able to target machine learning engineer role. So machine learning engineer pay scale, if you are having at least one year of experience, at least one year of internship or so, your salary can range around 8 lakh to 18 lakh for an entry level uh, machine learning engineer. So that by learning AI, you're able to target a role as a ML engineer. And if you're having an experience based on the roles and responsibilities you have it, for example, you delivered end-to-end -end project, you managed your team, you're able to implement machine learning plus ML ops, you worked on computer vision, you worked on various elements, then you are able to, means like you are able to bag a salary around 40 LPA, but that depends upon your current CTC as well. Now your salary for your future profiles depends upon your current CTC. That's what we are saying. And if you are looking into the US market, the salary of an ML engineer ranges from 1,25,000 to 1,87,000 is what ranging. And next by learning machine learning and especially within machine learning by specializing primarily on NLP, natural language processing, natural language understanding, how someone can give a title NLP is, now your entire experience, one year or two year is purely into NLP then you, are, you will be having a tremendous knowledge on natural language processing. By learning NLP, you are able to target especially NLP engineer. And the market here for freshers in India is like around 6 to 12 lakh for freshers. And whereas for experienced people, it is ranging from 12 lakh to 30. Again, how much? So can't I get 12 or 30 or 15? It depends upon your current CTC and what roles we are placing in your resume and what projects we are placing based on that your salary of 12 to 30 lakh is dependent. And if you take on, on the US side, on an average, we are getting $86,000 on the other side. And we got another role, means like you, you, you are learning, you completed your master's, you completed your, uh, we can say you're good at your master's on data science or AI. 
and uh, you even completed phd related to your ai and all that you are able to target your role as ai research scientist and where the pay scale for a ai research scientist here in india it is ranging from 15 to 30 it varies from the company to what are the numbers i'm sharing it so they are based on glass doors and all that now i don't say that these are the genuine numbers but always your salary depends upon the way you are negotiating your current skills and uh, the projects, the kind of projects you have in your resume, the kind of value you added in that projects and the value you are just taking near a table, near the interviewer, that is what defines your current CTC or your future salary is dependent on these three factors. So as I said, one, it is dependent on your skill set, what projects you worked on and the budget the company is having. These are the three elements which are very important and depends on experience and research background. Mostly a guy who is said as AI research scientist, you need to be good at PhD or something. And in the US market, we can see it is around $1,15,000 to $1,30,000 we are able to see it on an average in US. And next, we got uh, by learning AI, you can even be a data scientist. So now what do you mean by a data scientist? Now you use the concepts of AI, which is machine learning, in order to perform estimations for a business, you are trying to build market mix modeling or you are trying to build customer propensity modeling or you are trying to uh, build your cohort analysis. So you are doing all this kind of area. You are doing cross-selling, upselling. You are doing forecasting. Now all these are something of future estimations. You are trying to build it and you are demonstrating that to the client. You can target as a data scientist. For a data scientist, the salary in India, it is ranging from 7 lakh 50 uh, two and like for an experienced people ranging 30, 40, it ranges. And in a US market, it is having $65,000 to $1,30,000. We are able to see it. Again, keep one point in the brain. Whatever the title you are saying, it's the title also, the way you are giving your title also depends upon the number of people searching on that title. Now, if you are taking NLP engineer, now for an NLP engineer, there are very less people are searching. The recruiters are searching very less for an NLP engineer. It's better to give your title as AI engineer. If people are searching a lot on data scientists, then give your title as data scientist and add the skills. Always the title is more related to what people are searching, what recruiters are searching. And the second one is what roles you are having. Now I want to be a senior data scientist. If you take data scientist, there are levels in data scientist. I can be an analyst. For example, now even though I learned PG programs on data science, I can still target my level as data analyst. So now most of the companies give me as a data analyst. And then I go, after working for one or two years, they make me a data scientist. After working for another four or five years, or I call as senior data scientist, lead data scientist. So if you are going, again, from the lead side, you can take two different paths. You can be into the strategic side, you can be into the technical side. What do you mean by strategic side is, you are, you are trying to manage a project, you are trying to get the clients, you are able to get the business strategic side. So your technical side, you are managing your team, you are trying to manage the end-to-end -end product of your data science, the journey of it, technical side of it. So then if from a lead, if you are taking technical side, you can be a principal data scientist, you can be a chief data scientist. And if you are taking the strategic side, you can be a data science manager, you can be a director of data science, you can be a vice president of data science. In this way, we have designations. So Kant, how exactly these designations vary and what differs from one person to another person? What is the difference between strategic to technical? The way you are placing your roles. Now, I worked as a lead data scientist for two years and most of my experience is in managing the clients. I go in a strategic side or I'm getting the business to the business. I'm, I'm getting a lot of data science projects to the current company, strategic side. No, I'm making my team to work on it, technical side of it. So in this way, now this is your data science career path. Now on the other side, even same like AI, now even in the AI, you can target as a machine learning engineer, AI engineer, AI research scientist, you can target NLP engineer, computer vision engineer, or you can be AI product manager. So product manager as it, the roles you are placing related to your AI product manager. It's very important what roles we are placing and what projects you worked on, what profits you got within that project, what are your role. That differentiates you from one role to the another role. Now again, especially if you are targeting as a product manager, you need to have a role especially related to AI projects plus your project management skills and the ability to automate. So looking at a business case and ability to automate with your AI skills and a good management skills. That is what something they are expecting from AI product manager. And you can target nowadays we have again another two roles we call computer vision engineer. So especially AI engineer works on image recognition activities. He is building 
image recognition models, open CV models, or if you are working on CNNs, your regional convolution neural networks, all this, it going again, OCR kind of activities, all this going to be taken as computer vision engineer. Or you can be an MLOps engineer. MLOps engineer, I don't call it or it doesn't come into AI. It is a combination of data engineering and it is a combination of DevOps. You don't need to be a pro in ML, but in order to be an MLOps engineer, you need to know the DevOps concepts and you need to know a bit of cloud concepts, a bit of data engineering concepts. If you know these three elements, you can be more likely an MLOps engineer. And uh, generative AI engineer, so now you need to, NLP guy is more likely to be a generative engineer or AI engineer also can be generative AI. Now all the roles which I said right now are adding this generative AI skills. And most of the companies right now, they are having projects on Gen AI. Then computer vision, then rest of all, they are having a lot of generative AI projects. It's going to a bit uh, slow down in the next uh, few years. But as of now, everyone are more of Gen AI, Gen AI, Gen AI kind of thing. They want to use Gen AI everywhere. But in few years, yes, we can see a downside of Gen AI. In few, why there is not much use cases around Gen AI. So once you, it's all about text agentic. Once it is done, so there is very less we are gonna see. But um, let's see how exactly the future going to be. If you are targeting for AI, you can target yourself as generative AI engineer, computer vision engineer, ML engineer or we can say deep, any of this. So as I said, any title you can give it, but you need to select the title based on what, uh, how many people are searching for the title. And if you are curious on that, you, you are very passionate on LB, even you can place it. And based on the title, you need to have the right roles and uh, based on the roles, right projects and what value you have it in the project. So based on the value, salary you are able to get as that particular role is dependent. Now, if you lack all of this, then there are very less chances that you get hired. Even as a fresher, they are paying very, very less. Now, I suggest only one thing. You can be a fresher. You can be an experienced. Do only one thing. Build a portfolio. You are a fresher. Don't go as a fresher. So if you are getting an opportunity in the campus, that's wonderful. And in case no, if you are trying for a fresher role, now, even if you are targeting in the campus as well, try to build these projects and say what you can do. So instead of just saying, I know this, I know that, say what you have done or what you can do with uh, Snowflake or with SQL or with ML or with Gen AI, with all this, that creates a curiosity. Don't just create a dummy kind of project. See what companies are doing and try to take that uh, imagination and try to work around it. That's going to help you to get a very good amount of opportunities in case if you need some guidance on how to make a transition, so as a fresher into any of these roles, or as an experienced into any of these roles, or as a with a career gap into any of these roles, yes, I'm happy to help you to get a successful career transition into all these particular roles. I can guide you, I can check your background, so I cannot make a transition saying, hey, join this course. I need to see your background, I need to understand, so where you are standing. And is there a way that I can use your current experience and to shape a data science experience or an AI experience so that you can get a good salary high? I take you in a fresher, how we can use your background and how we can maximize your salary hike. So I work around how we can maximize your uh, job roles, salary hike and all this and how exactly you can have a solid future. So that's where I will be working around. So in case if you are interested, you can book a call with me. The links are in the description. So or you can uh, dial to the number which is on my screen. So the WhatsApp is mine, I'll be seeing that. So you can just give a missed call to it or you can just WhatsApp me. I'll be just seeing it and I can um, give you a guidance on top of it. I hope you got this proper clarity on it. So while you're making any of the transitions, keep one point in the brain. PG, so whatever you're learning, whether you are learning through uh, means like UG or PG or you are doing a PhD, care about only one element, only projects. So what projects you are having and what kind of value you can create it. It's not the technical aspects, it's more of the value you are bringing to the table. By using technical, what problems you are solving? By using the technical skills, what type of issues you are resolving it? What type of value you are generating it? What you are automating it? That is more important than just uh, learning a lot of technical skills. So build that and always keep one point in the brain. You are the intellectual person. So when you are trying to be a data scientist or an AR, you are an intellectual person. You cannot just be uh, having just a Python knowledge. You need to have that confidence. Hey, I can do this. Now, if you don't believe in your own self or if you are unable to build that confidence, if you don't feel that you are the most intellectual person. So intellectual person doesn't mean you are being overconfident. You are everyday learning. You are not wasting your time. You are learning. I have a bigger purpose. I'm just, uh, I, my goal is not to learn ML. My goal is to automate. 
My goal is not to learn Python. My goal is to solve the problems. My goal is not to do SQL. My goal is to retrieve it there are petabytes of data and to solve big complex problems. For that, every day you're constantly learning it. Keep that points in the brain and try to aim for the roles you're able to successfully make a transition. Dial to the number and thank you for watching this video. And if you like it, please do subscribe and share your views in the comment section.